called a fractional to sales and how or zero and how I got here was sort of interesting but um, my hard launch was October 1st and it has been a very interesting road and I, I really love it so in some respects there's been some challenges with kind of what Matt was saying with some people misunderstanding what ghostwriting and credibility and all the things around it some of them misunderstand um, fractional uh, the fractional world and when it's needed and when it's not and sometimes there are times where I get talking to customers and I literally refer them to somebody else because they didn't need me you know for instance so I'm, I've been developing a company with a partner out of Scotland to create 20 mini me's based around um, having eight companies that they work at fractionally because the workforce has changed so much. There's a lot of, especially in the sales revenue roles, there's a lot of upheaval um, brought on either by COVID or just the fact that they all know that they can start working anywhere or just a lot of um, hard replacing um, different places and then um, different employees. And then 99% of the workforce, I mean, 99% of the companies in the United States are literally um, small businesses, yet the Fortune 100 makes up the GDP. <laughs> <laughs> and 82% of small businesses fail within the first and second year. And a lot of times when we think about that, that that's that's really rough, right? And a lot of it is due to cash flow and and some of those types of uh, those types of things. So as I thought about um, today's um, today's kind of sort of what would I present? I interviewed one of my current customers because I always like to know why they would choose fractional over full time. And, um, and I wanted to know specifically, obviously for my partner, what, what made it different? Why did they pull that trigger versus fractional? Fractional CFOs have been around for a long time. Um, marketing has been around for a long time. You've got back office accounting, stuff like that but the traditional roles that they typically will want to hire in-house um, like sales teams and things like that are moving more into a fractional space as well. And when I asked her, cause she had the, the customer this morning, when I asked her what really tipped the scale, she, she mentioned something that I have gotten, had other people get confused about me with is um, the consultant role. So there is a lot of like sales trainers out there and those, they teach great things. I love it. I use them all the time and they are also fractional. And then there is a lot of consultants out there. Um, and her, her challenge was that she'd had consultants over the years and she probably had lost several million in business because she didn't hire a fractional, which is hands-on in the integration of what they're actually consulting on. So in my organization, I actually go in and hands-on. I was on a sales call the other day with the owner and that's an odd thing. You don't usually you know, pull them in. And, um, and that was pitch hitting because one of her key people had gone into early labor and they were supposed to be on a pitch and I pulled up my bootstraps and put my salesman hat back on and I sold the customer with her. So it's it's different. And um, I guess there's varying degrees of that integration, but my company that I'm developing is what I call a growth, um, growth mindset up above plus a bottom up approach. So what I did is I partnered with um, just for the sales management piece so that I didn't have to spend a ton of time writing all the own content um, for Matt's. And sometimes it's very time intensive. 
Um, I partnered with Sales QB just for their six step proven process. And in that, I usually go in and assess that entire organization from their five year plan from like a chief strategy officer all the way to um, um, what type of market they have. I do a market analysis. I do all of those things as if a full-time employee, I attend their full-time meetings, their executive meetings with them, and I make res recommendations and then I hold them accountable. And that was the other thing that she said was very different that every time I talk to her, if her goal is 2.5 million this year, everything is centered around getting her that 2.5 million, how I build the sales team, how I bring in outsources or in sources, everything is centered around that. And then the whole playbook gets centered around their five-year plan. So next year, you will hire this person. And next year, this role, and it might be an outsource SDR. And by the way, you need a book. So hire Matt to make sure your PR is out there. So she also had mentioned to me today that she felt like I was a confident that she could actually, she was very lonely, that she really couldn't ask those questions to her rest of her teams. And so I get very hands-on. I spend a ton of hours with it. And the people that I hired to replace me in those positions would also have to have that same mindset and be able to do that as well. And we're hoping by five years from now, but actually closer, that we will have about 20 mini me's that could be servicing 160 different, different companies and do this fighter role. And if I do my job well, then I work myself out of a job because they've grown so much and now they can afford a full-time equivalent. Um, she also said a $50,000 sales manager does not equate to a half a million dollar sales manager at a Fortune 500 company. So just getting a warm body has not helped her over the last three years. So that's sort of what I'm doing. Um, I had some PowerPoints, but I didn't want to take the time to, um, I didn't want to take the time to actually pull it up. I could have showed you the six step process and all that fun stuff. <laughs> But that's it. That's that's what it is. And I just um, love to help anybody or have the conversation or if you guys know anybody. And then I'm happy always to be a source for the other the other direction to make sure that like Matt, I have I was thinking of the PR company that I'm working for right now and you being a a, um, a, a ghostwriter because she ends up working with a lot of those people and there's a fractional construction company that I'm working uh, I mean fractional for construction company that needs some writing as well so and gifts for wine for each of those <laughs> so anyways that's what I'm doing <laughs>